Hey guys, my name is Matt Johnson, and I recently made a video sharing my theory about why I think Sony is taking so long to release the Sony a7S III, a question that many filmmakers, myself included, have been wondering. Today, I want to dive deeper into why the a7S III hasn't been released yet, and I want to talk to you about what Sony themselves have said about the a7S III and why they may have engineered themselves a bit into a corner when it comes to the video specs for this camera. I'll link to my previous video about the a7S III up in the corner and down in the description. Now to start, I want you to view this entire video through the context of a quote made by one of Sony's senior managers during an interview in late 2018. He said that Sony wants the a7S III to quote, go beyond the customer's expectations, unquote. Please keep that phrase in mind throughout this video. Now let's go back in time to 2016, because 2016, yes, one year after the release of the a7S II, was in my opinion, the best year that Sony could have released the a7S III. As video creators, our demands for features and cameras have increased exponentially over the past few years. In 2016, riding hot off the success of the a7S II, if Sony had released the a7S III, the only real demand that people were making at the time was that they wanted the camera to be able to record in 4K at 60 frames per second. Heck, the camera could have even recorded 4K 60 at a crop. I feel like most filmmakers would still be happy with this. My point is that expectations were low. This camera would have sold like hotcakes with that one improvement. Improvement. What changed though? Why was 2016 the best year for Sony to release the a7S III? Well, in March 2017, Panasonic released a little camera called the GH5, and that completely turned the video specs war to 11. 4K at 60 frames per second, 10-bit video, rock-solid in-body image stabilization, dual card slots, and it didn't overheat either. These were features often reserved for much higher-end cinema cameras, definitely not a $2,000 mirrorless camera. I remember having conversations with other filmmakers in 2017 saying things like, oh man, Sony has to release the a7S III by the end of 2017, and it's going to match or beat all the GH5 features I'm betting. Well, that didn't happen in 2017, and it didn't happen in 2018 either, and we're halfway through 2019, and it still hasn't happened. In 2018, Sony released the a7 III, and while it improves on many of the shortcomings of earlier Sony full-frame mirrorless cameras with better battery life, dual card slots, much improved autofocus, the HLG picture profile, etc., it is still essentially recording in the same 4K 100 megabit codec with 8-bit color. Sony has not made an improvement to video frame rate, resolution, or bit depth since the release of the a7S II in 2015. Let's now compare these video features of the a7 III and even the a7R IV that was just released to what is currently available from other camera manufacturers. Blackmagic has now released the Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, which records 4K60 in RAW. Fuji released the X-T3, which shoots 4K60 in 10-bit. Panasonic announced and released the Full Frame S1 and S1R, which record 4K and up to 30 frames per second in 10-bit color, and 4K60 in 8-bit color with a crop. The Panasonic S1H is coming out later this year, which records video in 6K resolution. These companies are pushing the envelope of what is possible for video with a mirrorless camera. My point is that filmmakers' expectations for what their cameras are capable of have never been higher. Going back to Sony's senior manager's statement of go beyond the customer's expectations. In 2016, that would have meant to simply include 4K 60 frames per second. But now it means they need to beat all these other camera manufacturers with their impressive feature lists. If the S1H can shoot 6K, then that is now an expectation for the a7S III. Does this mean that for the a7S III to exceed expectations, it needs to record 8K video? I don't know. Thankfully, no camera manufacturer to this day has released a camera capable of recording 4K60 without a crop. So, at the very least, if Sony releases a camera that can do that, that will exceed expectations. There's more though. Filmmakers are going to expect 10-bit color, ideally while recording in 4K at 60 frames per second. Filmmakers want better in-body image stabilization, faster dual card slots, no overheating, maybe a flip-out screen? You see where I'm going here. In 2016, Sony had a very short list of expectations to exceed, but now, in 2019, the list is very long and I'm frankly 
frankly skeptical if Sony is going to be able to pull it off. My fear is that the a7S III has now built up this mythology about it, and it's going to have to meet or exceed every single camera spec from all of these other camera manufacturers if people actually want to be satisfied. Is Sony actually going to be able to pull that off? Well, if any company could do it, it would be Sony. They are the largest sensor manufacturer in the world. But looking at their latest and greatest camera, the a7R4, I'm not sure if the a7S III will be the greatest camera ever. The a7R4 with its 4K at 30 frames per second in 8-bit color is pretty underwhelming from a video spec standpoint. For me, Sony is running out of time. If the a7S III isn't released soon, the Panasonic S1H is calling my name. Hopefully we won't have long to wait for the A7S III. Rumor sites are saying that more Sony cameras are coming soon. Remember, Sony released the A7R II in mid-2015, and then the A7S II only a short months after. And also, remember that the A7R IV is the first new sensor for the A7R series since 2015. I'm really hoping that just like in 2015, Sony releases the A7S III only a few months after the A7R IV with a new sensor that blows everyone away. If you are watching this video a few months after I've uploaded it, you may already be holding your a7S III and thinking, everything's gonna be fine, Matt, don't worry about it, this camera's great. For me though, I'm gonna have to wait a little bit longer. With that, thank you so much for watching me ramble about the Sony a7S III. It is a huge help to me if you would consider liking this video and subscribing if you want to see more videos like this in the future. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day. Oh!